it's time to bring you yet another amazing episode. And now, welcome your host. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Life Well Lived by Amabila Stephen. It's an engaging and enlightening talk show on life, relationships, and the business of life. Grab a cup of juice and just chill. Life Well Lived by Amabila Stephen. Live life. Live fully. Good to have you on the show. This is Life Well Lived by Amabila Stephen. I'm your host, Life Well Lived by Amabila Stephen. We focus extensively on personal development and self-improvement topics occasioning expert and professionals who are hired in these topics, share disruptive yet constructive mindship conversations on topics or subjects on the personal development and self-improvement. We emphasize the need to embrace personal development and self-improvement along the course of our lives because all of the innate gift sets that we have within us can only come to the fore when we look inwards, begin to ask the right questions. And at the end of the day, Unnessing this gift set and also the skill set that lies within us, maximizing it to the fullest. Now, embracing personal development and self improvement along the course of life will make you, as you uh, keep at it, you will get to find yourself in the process. And on finding yourself, you realize that there is so much potential that lies within us and there is so much possibilities, endless possibilities that you can become in life and you can also achieve in life. Now, this is the vision and also the mission of the podcast. We shine more light on what is truly inside of you and how you can move from where you have to where you need to be in order for you to have a fulfilling life at the end of the day in the side of eternity. Today, I have Jeremy Shapiro, who is a serial entrepreneur and also as a mentor and coach to entrepreneurs, serial entrepreneur, Jeremy B. Shapiro helps founders found um, entrepreneur freedom as a true business owner. He has a lot to talk about, about finding freedom and also helping entrepreneurs develop a mind shift for a really successful business. Thank you once again, Jeremy Shapiro, for coming to the show. Thank you for having me. This is great. All right, thanks for joining me also. I'm looking forward to a great time as we explore uh, this very important topic, especially for the uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners. Now, uh, do you think entrepreneurs are struggling in their business because of their mindset? Do you think that's the issue? So often I see when business owners and entrepreneurs plateau or stagnate in their growth, it comes down to one of a handful of really mindset issues. Um, one of those from a scaling standpoint is this imposter syndrome that usually gets in the way of launching a business in the first place or really growing it beyond being a solopreneur. The second is a perfectionist mindset where an entrepreneur feels that everything has to be to the highest possible standard that only they can achieve and their team will never be able to, which is a problematic. And that ties to the third one, which is that no one can do things as well as the business owner or founder. Um, there's others beyond that, but those are the ones that I see that often come up. Um, and maybe with an asterisk, the fourth one being that um, if they hire people to do their work, those employees will just go off and launch their own business competing with them. Um, all of those can be addressed. And as we address those individually with entrepreneurs and business owners, we really get to see those mind sh mindset shifts and we see the entrepreneur get unblocked and start to grow from that point forward. All right. So now we emphasize the importance of uh, embracing mindset shift. Now, Jeremy, uh, one of the topics we also like to explore is the power of the mastermind, which you have an expertise in. So the question is, uh, where did the concept of the mastermind come from? And how is it being misused today? Yeah, when uh, Napoleon Hill, one of sort of the forefathers in personal development um, that really got out there and became well known, um, published one of his best known books, Think and Grow Rich. This was back in, I believe, 1938. Um, chapter 10 in there was called The Power of the Master Mind, The Driving Force, The Ninth Step Towards Riches. And the whole entire concept of what's covered in there is that when we get more than one person together in the same room at the same time and talking about a concept, we get not just the benefit of two minds, but there's almost this creation of the third mastermind that encompasses all the minds or brains or thoughts in the room. Um, and it's really from getting these unique and different perspectives that are beyond just our own, that we can see major pivots, not just in our businesses, but in ourselves personally. 
And so the way that's used today, um, for example, the way we use that concept at the Bay Area Mastermind is we have a once a month full day mastermind meeting for entrepreneurs to get together and really spend the day working on their business as opposed to the usual day-to-day -day work of working in the business. And there's a big difference between those. If you think about the work you do in your business, this is the work of the business. If you are, let's say, um, you know, if you have a bakery, the work of the business is making baked goods, right? The work on the business is looking at how to grow, how to expand, how to put the systems in place and all those things, right? The work of the business, if you're an electrician, is doing the actual electrical work, right? The work on the business is looking how to expand new territories, how to hire, how to train, how to manage, how to um, optimize your workflows and your operations and all those kinds of things. So in the mastermind, everyone gets together for the day to do this work on the business, the more strategic and visionary work. And it's a peer advisory group. And what this means is as everyone is individually sharing their, during their hot seats, it's not just a one-way presentation. It's a two-way conversation. So when you're sharing about your business and what's going on, the challenges you're facing, the big wins and successes you've had and so on, the group is there to support you, to encourage you, to call you out on your blinders and your blind spots and help you to uncover the opportunities you have because of their unique perspectives that are beyond just your own. They'll see things that you're not seeing because of where your mindset is or what your beliefs are. You get that unique, diverse perspective that can really help you to grow. All right. Uh, now, uh, Jack, me. now we talk about strategy and we also talk about then tactics right is it really right for a business uh to focus more on strategy and not on tactics uh, which most of them um use to grow their business these days yeah so look you can't have one and not the other right if you spend all your time on the tactical you don't have a direction to go because you don't have the strategy. If you spend all your time on the strategic, but don't do any of the tactical, you have the best plans in the world, but they're not executed upon. So you do need a balance. That's why with our mastermind, we spend one day a month doing the work on the business. And then you have that time between meetings to actually implement and get the team doing all the tactical so that they can implement the strategy you've talked about, right? So I'll share with you an example of that. Um, at our meeting, uh, all kinds of topics around business and personal development come up. This can be on the business side, marketing, sales, HR, operations, any of these things, right? So um, it's very common. We see what I call the cross-pollination of ideas that comes up between multiple, multiple members talking in different industries or different businesses. So I'll share with you a story. We had um, a business that was a brick and mortar business, like a retail store. And we had a business owner with an online e-commerce business. Now, as they're both sharing how they grow their business, they grow them in very different ways. The e-commerce business relies a lot on SEO, PPC, pay-per-click advertising, uh, and email marketing. The retail store uses a lot of traditional media marketing, direct mail, and so on. So by these two businesses talking about the different strategies they use for growth and what's working and what's not, they're able to ask each other questions around how they're seeing success and then implement those. And so what we see is the, uh, the email marketer was talking about their EPC or earnings per click. The email marketer knew that when he sent out email, people would click and they would buy products from his online store. And he knew how much money would come in from each of those. The brick and mortar store was able to ask all the questions around what you put in the emails, when you send them, how often, how to build an email list, how to measure success and all that. And then was able to go from that strategy with all the best practices and actually implement it over the next month. And so she was able to send out emails. And then just like the e-commerce store owner, she saw when she sent an email, money came in. And that was a whole new channel she hadn't been using before because she implemented the tactical side of that strategy. On the flip side, that e-commerce business owner was able to ask all kinds of questions around direct mail. Where do you find your direct mail list? What kind of piece do you send out in your direct mail? Do you use a postcard? Do you use a letter? Do you use color versus black and white? What are the best practices? How do you put an offer in place? How do you track the offers and so on? And the retail store owner was able to answer all those questions, provide the resources, the contacts and so on. And over the next month, that e-commerce business owner was able to put a direct mail campaign in place and actually get results and look at the return on investment or the ROI from using direct mail in an e-commerce business. And so those are the kinds of things that come up is uncovering new opportunity simply by hearing somebody else share what's going on. And then over that month, to your point, you can actually implement 
and run the tactical part of that strategy. Uh, thanks, uh, Jeremy, for sharing that uh, insight with my audience. Uh, really, uh, when we come to think of it, entrepreneurs, they go to burnout. Now, from launch stage, the idea of betting uh, a business and to all the process that goes with it and just try to make sure that the business is sustained and maintained. Uh, it's a real uh, big deal, especially for solopreneurs or entrepreneurs who are doing this thing all by themselves. So they go to burnout, this is a reality. How do they manage this burnout? Is it permitted to uh, have to experience burnout? And if it's also permitted to experience burnout, which is a reality to most of us, how do they overcome this? It's a really good question. Um, burnout is usually caused from a few key things for founders and entrepreneurs, right? One is as an entrepreneur, we're full of ideas, right? We see, not only do we see problems and challenges, we see opportunities and we find ways to solve them. That's why we have businesses, right? We saw an opportunity, we realized we could do something about it, and then we did. What this means is we forever have a mountain of a to-do list in front of us. There is no shortage of opportunities or things we can do. And so it's easy to focus on the mountain in front of us of all the things we can and should do and lose track of all we've done. And so we rarely take a moment to look back and see all that we have accomplished. And so when you have a mastermind group, we take the time at the Bay Area Mastermind at the start of every meeting to look back over the past month and acknowledge all the big wins and successes as well as the challenges and then talk about what we're going to be working on over the upcoming month, right? So you have a chance to celebrate those successes you get that perspective from others who can acknowledge all that you've done. Accountability is a big part of our mastermind group. So at the end of everyone's hot seat, we talk about what the plan is over the next month and what you're socially committing to get done. See, as an entrepreneur, it can be lonely at the top. There's no one to hold you accountable, right? So when you have your mastermind group that you've agreed on your accountability items with, the next month they can circle back and we get to ask how you're doing on your items and what got done and where you need help. So as an entrepreneur, you have the support in a mastermind group of the acknowledgement of what has been done, as well as the clarity of focus on what needs to get done going forward. So burnout usually comes from the overwhelm of not knowing what to focus on in the mountain in front of you. And so the mastermind group can really help with that. The second big cause for burnout, especially with solopreneurs, comes down to everything falling on your shoulders and your shoulders alone. Right. As you grow from being a solopreneur and you put the right systems in place and you get the right people on your team to run those systems, less and less of the business needs to rely on you. So I'll share a story with you. Um, we had uh, a client who was a solopreneur and in his business, he felt because his name was on everything, like many of us, that if anything went wrong or his customers needed him, he needed to be available 24 seven. So what that led to was him needing to be by his phone at all times just in case a customer needed him, which is noble, right? He's got his name, his brand, his, his pride and everything all wrapped up in this. And that's good. The problem is it was all ending up on him. And this was a guy who likes to go mountain biking, who likes to go hiking and enjoying the outdoors. But when he would go out mountain biking, he couldn't be available on his phone and there usually wasn't cell phone coverage where he would go mountain biking. So he stopped doing the things that he loved the things that were good for his health and his wellness and his well-being because he felt tethered and attached to being available to his customers all the time, which is not a bad thing. The difference is it doesn't need to be him. So one of the first things we did was we had him hire a virtual customer support person to be there for him during business hours. Suddenly going from a business of one to a business of two people freed him up to, first of all, not have to be putting out fires all day but also he could rest easier knowing that he had someone who was available to help his customers out. And he was able to start getting done the things that he liked to get done for his mental health and his physical wellness, like getting outdoors and getting fresh air and getting out in the forest and nature, right? So this was able to allow him to recharge, focus on the strategic part of the business, knowing his customers were cared for because he had the right systems and the right people in place. So often burnout comes from bearing all the weight on your shoulders, and seeing the mountain of what is in front of you that needs, needs to get done. Getting that peer advisory from a mastermind group and that accountability and acknowledgement is huge in getting unstuck and unblocked and moving forward so you can create that space in your life to recharge, that space in your life to do things that aren't just the business 
and to get the acknowledgement for all that you've done, taken care of from those who are around you. All right now, um, Jeremy, you help um, founders or business owners to find entrepreneurial freedom. Now I emphasize entrepreneurial freedom. What's what's so unique about that? Yeah, it's funny. Whenever I say entrepreneurial freedom, I found that the first thing people usually think of is financial freedom. And yes, when you have your own business and you do it right, the financial part can be taken care of. And I write a lot about that. I have a great article on your freedom number and how to find that and calculate it and build that and so on. And that's good. But entrepreneurial freedom is that freedom that comes from having your own business. Entrepreneurial freedom is optionality. It means you have a choice for how you spend your time. This means if done right, you can choose who you spend your time with, when you spend that time, and how you use that time, right? This can, of course, be a reinvestment back in your business on the strategy side of things. This can also mean you have the freedom of time to be with your family, to help out in your community, right? Work with your nonprofits that are important to you. Give back. It lets you choose what you do with that time, right? When you're caught up working, you know, a hundred hour work week and it's for your own business, that's where burnout comes from. You don't get to rest and recharge. It also doesn't provide time for you to be present with your family or in your community or in whatever is important to you. So when you find true entrepreneurial freedom with the right systems and the right people, suddenly you get that time back. This lets you be there for family dinner every single night. This lets you be there to get the kids to school, to be there for the soccer games, to be there for their plays, to be there for all those things. This lets you get back your evenings so you can go out and date night with your spouse. This lets you get back weekends to spend with your community and whatever is important to you and so on, right? Um, a, a quick story around that. Um, early on, way earlier on in my career, um, I was one of those guys who had a business and you know, early on in the days of cell phones, a cell phone where clients would be reaching out to me. And I started dating this wonderful woman and I found myself at one of her earlier dates during dinner looking at my cell phone and interrupting her when a call came in from a client. And it took me all of like that one evening to realize there was something wrong with this. And so from that moment, I switched it around to not answering my cell phone outside of quote, quote, business hours, um, not answering my emails or even checking those and retraining my clients on what my availability was. And that way I could be present with this amazing woman as we we're dating. And here we are, you know, 20 plus years later, I'm happily married with a family and all those great things because I changed the mindset and realized what was important was being present there with the person I was with and not being constantly distracted by whatever the business needed from me every second of the day to firefight. And wouldn't you know it, once I changed that mindset and transferred that onto my clients, they were retrained and knew that if they emailed me or called outside of business hours, I would get back to them in the morning, but I wasn't available until then. And guess what? That's actually respected. Uh, and businesses do appreciate that. So figure out where those boundaries are and you can actually enforce those. And that let me pursue what was really important to me. Um, and you know, I'm, uh, I, I couldn't be um, happier with that decision from then. Fast forwarding here, decades on, uh, and what a great ripple effect that's had. All right. Uh, Jeremy, thank you once again for your thoughts. And now let's talk about business funnels. Uh, so uh, we have most business owners who go wrong with their funnels. But really, as an expert in this regard, how can they get it right? Or how can they fix their leaky business funnels? Oh my gosh, I, I, you and I could talk about funnels for days. Um, I've run workshops on this stuff. I, you know, I teach on this stuff. Uh, it's, I, I love funnels. So, uh, so that's a really good question. Um, okay, so funnels, when we talk about funnels in your business, most everyone, the first thing to think of is your marketing funnel, right? We think about someone landing on your website, someone opting in and buying and so on. We think about that sort of funnel in the business. The reality is we have funnels everywhere in our business. We have hiring funnels, we have lead funnels, we have sales funnels, we have career ascension funnels for our team members. These exist in so many places in our business. Throughout their funnels, however, each step of the way, we don't get 100% conversion, right? What this means is not everyone who sees your ad will click on it, not everyone who clicks on your ad will opt in, not everyone who opts in will buy, and so on. If that was the case, well, that's actually a problem. You never, you never really want 100%. We end up with this funnel shape with each step of the way you have a conversion rate. So let's say you have a thousand people who view your ad, a hundred of those click on your ad, 10 of those opt in and one of those 
buys, right? So each step of the way, we have a 10% conversion. 10% of your viewers click, 10% of your clickers opt in, 10% of your opt-ins buy, and so on. So the first important thing we need to know for any funnel in our business is what the actual numbers are. And it's always amazing to me how few business owners actually know their numbers for each step of their funnel. So step one is actually track your raw numbers for each step of your funnel. Step two is really easy, it's math. We just look at your conversion rate from each step. So in those, in those uh, example numbers I gave, if you have a thousand people who view your ad and a hundred who click, you just divide one over the other and you know a 10% conversion, right? So as you do this for each step in your funnel, you can look at where the most, the, the, the worst performing part of your funnel is. Then we can look at what we can do to improve that. So using our same example, let's say from your thousand ad views, you have a hundred clicks, but only one opt-in. Well, your opt-in rate's only 1%. So we've got to look at how we can improve that. Well, that would tell me that your ad is clearly resonating with your audience, but then once they click through to, through to your ad, something is wrong where they're not actually then opting in. Maybe your offer isn't strong enough. Maybe there's not what we call congruency between the ad and the landing page. Something is off. So we look at what we can improve to get that congruent and get that lined up to boost that 1% up, right? And so as we do this iterative process, fixing each part of that funnel, you start to see those rates change. And once one of them improves, you have something else that's now your weakest part. And all we're doing is applying what's called the theory of constraints or TOS. And when we do that, we get to iteratively improve our funnel again and again and again. And wouldn't you know it, a little 1% change at one spot in your funnel can make a big difference. And once you improve one part of your funnel, that 1% or more, you can keep doing this. And if you do this again and again and again, those little, little changes start to stack up. And those little changes aren't additive, they're actually multiplicative. Meaning, improving that, we multiply that percentage improvement out, we don't just add that percentage improvement on. So look at the funnels in your business, not just your top of funnel or your bottom of funnel or elsewhere, but everywhere in your business, and look at how you can improve your conversion for each step in that funnel. Uh, Jeremy, my audience are pretty excited to learn of any new projects in the pipeline that you think uh, they think it's going to be beneficial to them or any exciting news. Do you like to share any? Yeah, so um, uh, I run workshops from time to time. These are usually free online workshops, like um, what we just talked about here in a few minutes about the funnels. Um, I actually have like the entire recording of that workshop, the worksheet that you can use and everything. That's at bayareamastermind.com slash funnels. Um, so you can check out that. Um, we've also done one on like marketing calendars and all sorts of other things. So those are all available on our site. You can access those for free and enjoy those. Um, my goal is helping you as an entrepreneur to know your numbers and do a better job with those. Um, and then of course we have, we have mastermind groups. And so you can find out about our test drive process. Um, what we found experientially is not every mastermind group is the right fit for every person and not every person is a fit for every mastermind group. So it doesn't make sense for someone to raise their hand and tell me they're interested in a group and then just be in a group. So we actually have an application process that folks can check out. It's actually a very insightful application. Um, you will enjoy that process. And then um, we look to see if you're a fit. And if so, we invite you to invest in just a one day test drive with us. That lets you experience the mastermind one time to see if the group's a fit for you and if the group feels you're a fit for the group. And if so, then we invite you to see if a mastermind membership makes the most sense. And if not, you meet some great people, you get answers to your biggest questions, and you really see you know, what that community of other founders and entrepreneurs is like. Uh, and best case, you find that our mastermind family is the, you know, the family you've been looking for all along to support you in your, you know, in, in your entrepreneurial journey towards entrepreneurial freedom. Brilliant, thanks very much. Do you have any parting word to share with the entrepreneurs out there? Yeah, we, we all get stuck from time to time, and that's okay. We all get frustrated from time to time, and that's okay. We all also have big wins, and that's also okay. Surround yourself with those who can truly support you and be there with you on that journey, who their only care is your success. They don't, they're not your customers. This isn't your family. These aren't your friends. These aren't you know your vendors. These aren't your employees. These are other entrepreneurs who've been there, who've done that, and who want to help you succeed as well. Surround yourself with the right people and, uh, and you can go really far. 
Brilliant. Thank you for that motivation, uh, Jaima. You'd like to say, share your social media and on your website once again for the audience. Yeah, you can find me at bayareamastermind.com. That's B-A-Y-A-R-E-A -A -A mastermind.com. Um, you can also find Bay Area Mastermind on all your socials, um, you know, from Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and so on. Uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm Jeremy Shapiro. You'll see this face um, there as well for, with Bay Area Mastermind. And uh, a lot of the stuff that I write about, um, a lot of the interviews that I do, and a lot of the resources and all, I share that stuff uh, liberally online. So um, please do follow us, check us out. And lastly, again, if you're looking to see what a mastermind group is like, I invite you to uh, join us for a test drive. And you can find that at Bay Area Mastermind. Com. Great. Thank you once again, Jeremy Shapiro, um, for sharing your thoughts on today's show, especially talking about the power of the mastermind, entrepreneur freedom, and also you helping entrepreneur development mind sheet for a really successful business. I am my audience and wish you best of luck in all the projects that you embark upon, Jeremy. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Thank you so much once again. If you'd like to catch up with any of these episodes of the show, you can do so on any course promotion platforms or any podcast distribution platforms you bump into online. You can just search for live value to come over Stephen and there you go. Do have a great time as we listen to expert professionals, the thought leaders, share profound insights on topics or subjects on the personal development and self-improvement. I need it always to stay safe. I will talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. This was fun. Yeah. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you subscribe and leave us a review.